everybody it's that time of week again it is time for wine a little wednesday and today we're in my kitchen my slightly messy disorganized kitchen but that's not the point today we're going to be doing a very special viewer suggestion and it's special because it actually came from my best friend jamie so thank you jamie for the suggestion i'm really looking forward to doing this one and today we're going to be making something called everlasting syllabub. Now, if you've never heard of it, don't feel bad. I had never heard of it either until a couple of weeks ago. It's actually a Victorian dessert that is essentially boozy whipped cream. It sounds amazing. It combines two of my favorite things, wine and whipped cream. So how can it be that bad, right? So we're going to get started and let's see how it goes. I've never made this before, so completely experimental and I'm trying it for the first time with you guys. So let's go. Well, first thing that we need for the everlasting syllabub is heavy whipping cream. So the recipe calls for two and a half cups of whipping cream. So we're just going to measure that out. This is going to make an awful lot because two and a half cups is no joke. That's a lot of whipping cream, but I love whipped cream, so I think we'll be okay. Just a quick note about this dessert. Um, Jamie had read about it a long time ago in books, in Victorian era books, and she never knew what it was, and she came across this video on YouTube um, on a channel called Tasting History, where the gentleman who uh, runs that channel actually made this. and. He includes the history of the entire dessert, how it got its, uh, where it started off as, and how it evolved, and even Victorian style recipes for it from cookbooks back in the day. It was actually a really interesting video. I'm going to put the link to that video in the description section of this, so that way, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about it, you can just go watch his video because we're not going to do a history lesson. We're just going to make a delicious dessert. So. First, like I said, we're going to take the two and a half cups of heavy whipping cream and the original recipe tells you to whisk it by hand for 30 minutes in terms of the entire dessert. I'm not about to do that. I'm going to use my absolute favorite kitchen accessory or appliance or however you want to describe it and use my awesome KitchenAid mixer. So we're going to use that. We're going to, instead of whisking by hand, so we're going to put going to do this with the correct hand. We're going to put all of this right in there. I'm actually going to get a spatula so I can make sure I get all of it out. We don't want to waste any of that goodness. So, okay, two and a half cups of heavy whipping cream and then also a cup of powdered sugar. Powdered sugar. We're just going to add that in there. And basically, we're just going to whisk that together until the sugar is dissolved. So, here we go. Okay, that looks about right. So, now we're going to whisk in the remaining ingredients. So the remaining ingredients, I've actually switched up the recipe a little bit from what the gentleman in the tasting history video uh, did because I wanted to incorporate one of our wines, obviously. So he suggested using something like a white port or a sherry, something along those lines. But since it's summer, I wanted something a little bit more light and refreshing. So I chose our Toriamor. So that's what we're going to be doing it with. And so we're going to whisk in the remaining ingredients, starting with, this is the zest of one orange. So we're going to mix that in. And then the juice of the same orange, just zestless at this point. Well, that's not going to pour like that. And then we're going to use a teaspoon of rose water. Now, uh, whoops, where are we? There we go. 
Rose water is something that you can find in most baking supply shops. I got this at uh, Premier Gourmet. So it's really easy to find, not too difficult at all. And that calls for a teaspoon. So we're going to let this whisk until stiff peaks form, just like you would a regular whipped cream. So I'm going to turn up the uh, speed on here and let it go. Okay, I had to stop it for a second because I forgot to add the wine. So I'm going to add the wine in there now too. So we're going to add a half a cup of the Tori Amor. I don't know how I almost forgot one of the most important parts of this dessert. But that's how my life is going right now. So, four ounces of Victoria Moore. And now we're going to let it go. what you want. You don't want it to be flopping off of here unnecessarily. You want it to be a little bit thicker, just like whipped cream. It looks really nice and luscious and smooth. In the video, it used an ice cream scooper to put it in the glass. And funnily enough, this dessert was so popular back in the Victorian era that they actually had glasses specifically for the syllabub. I don't have a fancy glass like that, so I'm just going to use this really nice champagne glass that I don't get to use very often. And I'm going to plop it in there. Okay. And then I'm going to garnish it with a little bit of leftover orange zest. You can garnish it with whatever you want. Uh, this is what I had with me, so I'm garnishing it with the orange zest. And a couple of fresh raspberries. And you could use mint. You could use a slice of orange. You could just eat it right out of the mixing bowl, however you want to serve it. But that's what it looks like. It's really pretty, I think. And then... We're going to taste it. Okay, so the dessert is done. It's garnished. It's put in its fancy little container. So now we're going to taste it, see how it is. So here we go. Oh my goodness. That is so delicious. It, it, there's kind of no words for it. And I can only imagine the possibilities with some of our other sweet wines. Oh, with Trophy, with Pichette, 
even with our musque, this would probably be really great. Um, I wouldn't use anything too dry. I'd be interested to see how it would be with the Potensis, but with the Toriumor and the orange and the rose water, it's so stinking tasty. I could eat a whole bowl of it without even thinking about it. Because it's a little bit lighter than regular whipped cream. Whipped cream can be a little bit dense when it's homemade. But this is very light and fluffy and amazing. And I think you should all try out this recipe. But seriously, definitely try this one out. It's a fun idea because it's a historical dessert that isn't around anymore. So it would be kind of a, a fun story to tell people. If, especially if you watch the tasting history video learn a little bit more about where it may have come from why not serve it at your next party it was super easy it only took maybe 10 minutes in terms of everything i had to do the prep and the actual making of it so it's quick and easy and it's got a great story behind it so definitely try it out now of course we've got to have a featured wine of the week um i of I'm going to end up choosing the Toriumor because that is what we featured in this video. Where is it? Oh my goodness. There it is. Okay. So we're going to use the Toriumor as the featured wine of the week. So if you want to win a bottle of Toriumor, make sure you either head over to our YouTube page, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment under this video, or go on over to our Facebook page. Make sure you like or follow us on Facebook, and then leave a comment under this video, and you will be entered to win a bottle of Toriumor. And I will announce the winner of the Uvalina Blanc after I post this video. So make sure you check your comments and hopefully you'll be the winner. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and whine a little. You'll feel better. Bye!